Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying, varying genres, video games, analog horror, and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering, which is What the Fuck Happened to Shaun of the Dead uh, by Joe Blow Horror Original Videos, uh, uh, Joe Blow Horror Originals. Um, it's a channel I've been watching for quite a while. Um, I hope uh, you enjoy. It should be fun because everyone loves Shaun of the Dead. Let's boogie. Over the years, horror has evolved into many weird, wonderful, and gruesome folk genres. The 70s saw slashes emerge with films such as Prom Night and Halloween. Then by the 90s and beyond, the Scream franchise took on the horror mantle for slasher flicks. We've also been treated to classic monster movies that began with the likes of Frankenstein in 1931, to the sexy art house stylings of Jalo horror, while splatter flicks, also known as torture porn, burst onto the scene in the brutal eye gouging form of Hostel. While the supernatural yeah. also still play a major mm -hmm. role in scaring audiences nowadays. Of course, these are just the tip of the spooky iceberg when it comes to the delightful smorgasbord of horror subgenres. And there's one that continues to thrill fans on both the small screen and theatrically, the zombie movie. However, up until 2004, the zombie genre had offered some amazing titles, but not any that managed to shoehorn as many unexpected genres as the movie we're talking about today. Thanks to a love of George A. Romero's classics, such as Night of the Living Dead, plus an episode of Spaced, director and huge horror fan Edgar Wright helped to spawn a whole new subgenre of horror, the romantic zombie comedy, or rom -zom com with 2004's <laughs> Shaun of the Dead. It brought us a tale of slackers, family, zombies, a love triangle, and vinyl records being used as lethal weapons. But does it blend all of these elements into a gory, funny, and satisfying new subgenre? Let's find out here on what the f happened to Shaun of the Dead. Before Edgar Wright entered the cultural zeitgeist with his Cornetto trilogy, starting of course, as we all know, with Shaun of the Dead, he helped to create a small screen love letter to horror and science fiction with the UK made series Spaced. Starring Simon Pegg, Jessica Hines, Simon Nick Pegg. Frost, and go. directed by Edgar Wright, the episodic single camera show is a hilarious love letter to pop culture, such as cartoons and video games, plus, more specifically, Star Wars and horror films. Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines, who was known as Jessica Stevenson at the time, play aspiring comic book artist Tim and writer Daisy respectively, who meet by chance in a cafe while flat hunting, and soon form an inseparable bond. Every episode of Space is designed with such passion for its influences, and the series writers inject superb sight gags and bizarre cutaways at every possible opportunity. Huh. Huh. Just take the Scooby-Doo moment from episode 1, for example, or when Tim is fired <laughs> from his job at the local comic book store for berating a kid for liking Jar Jar Binks. He's also seen burning a Star Wars... Which I think is a reference to The Simpsons. ...merchandise after just watching The Phantom Menace for the first time. It's these nods and winks to pop culture, Sorry, and especially my, the zombie uh, moment from episode 3, season work, 1, uh, that led Spaced to ultimately inspire Shaun of the Dead. Uh, While playing Resident Evil chat. 2, oh, no. Tim fantasizes about killing zombies with familiar, non-diegetic zombie sounds. It's hilarious, and looking back on Shaun of the Dead, you can see the clear influence and love Peg and Wright had for the genre right there in that scene. Uh, heads up. Okay, I'll get right to the point. Shaun of the Dead is awesome. It's funny as f gory when it wants to be, and features endless quotable moments, all set to a banging soundtrack. Plus, Prince's Batman soundtrack gets deservedly smashed in one hilarious scene. Also, when it was released in 2004, British cinema was chucking out the likes of, uh, Sex Lives of the Potato Men, a so-called comedy featuring, you know what, it doesn't matter. It was atrocious, and despite the UK releasing some admittedly excellent movies that year... You're fucking there, mate. So get in the car and fuck off. Nothing revolutionary was happening for UK horror. Yet. Thankfully then, along came a wonder-kind director 
who had already established himself with the aforementioned space, and was primed and ready to unleash his unique visual style upon the cinematic landscape. Following that classic episode of Spaced, titled Art, in which Tim hallucinates a zombie invasion while high on amphetamines, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright set about writing their own horror comedy, with Wright describing the process as, One evening, I was round at Simon and his pal Nick Frost's flat for drinks when I said we should make our own zombie movie, a horror comedy. It would be from the point of view of two bit players, two idiots who were the last to know what was going on <laughs> after waking up hungover on a Sunday morning. By 1999, they'd pitched so the film to Randos. Film 4, who had to pass due to a lack of funding. Other companies passed on the movie, citing oh, their confusion so well about what it was trying to be exactly, simply not getting what it was. <laughs> Hindsight really is a wonderful thing. Ultimately, UK-based production company Working Title picked the movie up, which was somewhat ironic, given that the film mocks the rom-coms they were most well-known for producing. However, Tim Bevan and Eric Fellner, two of the most prominent top brass at Working Title, are shrewd operators, and, along with producer Neera Park, they knew they had something potentially very special with Sean. The script was written by both Simon Pegg and director Edgar Wright, and heavily influenced by movies such as Brain Dead, The Birds, Raising Arizona, Back to the Future, and, of course, Night of the Living Dead. Heck yeah. The cast was soon assembled, and alongside Simon Pegg was his longtime friend Nick Frost, who incidentally had never acted before, as Ed, and Kate Ashworth as Sean's girlfriend Liz. Most of the actors were made up of British comedians, comedy actors, and sitcom stars from not only Spaced, but other shows such as Black Books and The Office. Rounding out the secondary roles were Peter Serafinovich, Dylan Moran, Martin Freeman, Tamsin Grieg, Julia Deakin, plus Penelope Wilson as Sean's mother, yep. and the great Bill Nye as his stepdad Philip. Also, for the zombie extras, the production called upon spaced fan communities for yes, the scene in which Sean and friends and they were holed up in the Winchester pub, with the marauding undead outside. Over 150 zombie extras were used until local children saw the zombie makeup and pleaded to be involved resulting in an extra 50 child zombies being added. However, despite being a firm favourite of mine, what's the verdict on the movie? 20 years after it first shuffled into cinemas, Still demanding the brains and dodging the Batman soundtrack. Well, it's safe to say that it still holds up as an all-time classic piece of not only British cinema and horror, but also as it was marketed at the time, as a rom-zom-com. Simon Pegg plays Sean, a down-on-his-luck slacker who works in the local electrical store, shares a flat with his even lazier mate Ed in London's Crouch End, and likes a good old drink in his local pub. His girlfriend Liz has finally had enough and dumps him just as a plague hits Britain and the streets are filled with vicious, flesh-eating zombies. Not that Sean notices at first though, as exemplified by the scene where he wanders past the living dead on his way to buy a Cornetto and a Diet Coke from the local convenience store. Liz wants nothing more from Sean other than to grow up and be a man, and while this seems initially impossible, once the gravity of the zombie infestation becomes apparent, he goes on a zombie dodging quest to protect Liz at all costs. <laughs> and his mother too. <laughs> Some may have seen Shaun of the Dead as a parody, but instead it pays homage to them with great affection. The opening section showcases Wright's clever cinematography and in-camera transitions by showing several montages of Londoners going about their day like zombies themselves. They're either glued to the phones, staring into space on the bus, or trudge about their daily existence while at work. It's a great bit of foreshadowing, and also a neat commentary on how we're all basically zombified in some way, just without a penchant for eating brains, that is. Ultimately, the movie works because every element of it is razor sharp. The comedy is spot on, and the script zings with endlessly quotable lines. Can I get any of you a drink? <laughs> While the gore doesn't let the horror elements down, you can't help but have a massive cheesy grin on your face when the slimy prick David has his entrails ripped out. Absolutely. Or when Sean, Liz and Ed face off against the zombies to Queen's classic... Do you know his girlfriend survives? Now. She the sleeps in a tree overnight like a makes it out. ...the episode of Space is also no bad thing. Sean of the Dead opened in the UK <laughs> on April the 9th and grossed upwards of $3 million over its opening weekend across 367 cinemas. It managed to hold out a top 10 spot in the UK for five consecutive weeks, while its US and Canadian release on September 24th saw it grow $3.3 million over its three-day weekend me, across 607 theatres, 
Following a brief re-release in Still 2020 trying to get rid of a call and 2022, doing that Sean ultimately help. made $38.7 million worldwide, against a budget of $6 million. Critically, the movie was met with much well-deserved praise. On Rotten Tomatoes, because, you know, some folk like to see their stats from that website, <laughs> it holds a 92% fresh rating from 218 reviews. With the critics' consensus saying, Shaun of the Dead cleverly so balances the scares and witty satire, of that, uh, making for a bloody good zombie it. movie with loads of wit. In the UK, the BBC called it a side-splitting, head-smashing, gloriously gory horror comedy that will amuse casual viewers and delight genre fans. Similar gushing praise came from The Guardian, who awarded it 4 out of 5 stars, saying how it boasts a script crammed with real gags and is paisley directed and nicely acted. In the US, film critics Roger Ebert and Roger K. Elder praised the movie for bringing something new and refreshing to the horror genre overall. Ultimately then, Shaun of the Dead sets its stall out to be a loving homage to the sci-fi and horror movies that influenced Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, and it delivered in space. Yeah, absolutely. It even made cricket bats cool again. Well, almost. <laughs> of course, it was just the beginning for Wright, Pegg and co, with two more movies in their Cornetto trilogy following. With the excellent Hot Fuzz in 2007, and the divisive The World's End in 2013. As usual though, it's your opinion that means the most to us here at Joe Blow. So what do you make of Shaun of the Dead? Does it successfully reinvent the horror genre while also... Uh, Shaun of the Dead is one of those movies that um, it's a comfort film for me. You know, like I can always sit down and watch this movie. It's like watching um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Like it's, it's, it's always something that I'll watch. Um, and... Uh, and, and it's like it's on the mind of everybody like what would you do if you were in a zombie apocalypse and this is what you know like yeah yeah this is probably what it would be like you know yeah creating a new subgenre or should it be chained up like zombie ed let us know in the comments and we'll see zombie you Ed's beautiful cool. gore hounds next time <sighs> Ed, Ed. <laughs> yes yes so that's what the fuck happened to uh, Shaun of the Dead. I love this movie. Probably gonna watch it later on. Not tonight, tomorrow. Sometime this week. <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. Uh, let me know what you thought about Shaun of the Dead in the comments. Um, it, was it a formative part of your movie career? Because it was mine. Um, like, subscribe, share. Be safe, happy, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.